All right, hopefully you had the chance to practice the exercises that we went through on the last video. And now we're going to start going directly to how to import data in R, because we've been working on how to type or create data in, in the script itself. But now it's the turn to import data from other sources. So I'll just erase everything so we start with a whiteboard. So if we click here, we're going to clean everything we've been working with, also with the plots. And we can do the same with the console. OK, so now we we'll start with everything brand new. So first of all, um, where is the data taken from? Um, if you type get wd, which it means working directory, um, it's going to say what's your working directory that's been um, linked to. So in this case, I'm going to user, Selena, and desktop. And um, you can change this working directory by creating set wd and here write a new route. I'm just going to go with the same one right here. And by default, R allows you to import CSV files. Um, this is the command you should write to import commands as a CSV file. Just read dot CSV and then your working directory here. Um, this it works for my laptop, but of course you would have to change it depending on the location of the file you want to import. And always between these commas right there. So if I click on here, you see, this data has been imported. And if I click on it, I can visualize everything is inside. Um, you can try it with whatever CSV file you have. But what happens if I want to import files that are in, for example, um, Excel format? Um, well, for that, we would need a package. Um, in the beginning uh, of the sessions, I briefly talked about packages. When you go to this tab, you can see what packages you have installed. So now it's the time to go deeper with packages. Packages mostly are um, an accumulation of different functions that somebody has uploaded into the R interface. And you can download them using uh, um, tools, install packages. And here you type the name of the packages you want to install. Let's just go with the one that we want to install right now. This one. Install. Yes. And OK, now it's already installed in our system. Um, also, another way to do it would be to type install packages and between commas the package name. Um, so that's, that works either way. And now we have to charge this library into our session. So OK, the package is installed. It's in our computer. But now we have to call all these functions into our R session. And to do so, we just type library and the package we want to charge. So I'll just we do this. And now if we go to the packages list, we should see that open xlsx. Scroll all the way. You see, it's clicked. It means that it is loaded. You could click here and click here, and it would, it would work exactly the same. We've gotten good at installing and charging packages and I just use them. I'm going to charge this file that is an XLSX file, so it's an Excel file. Um, it mimics the function of the read CSV, so it's read X XLSX. And the same functioning, so you just put the route here between commas, and it loads itself. Um, here, the name I'm going to put to this database is T1. Oh, it says that the file doesn't exist, so that could be because some of these parts of the route is not well written. Also, there's something important that might be handy for you is that R has its own um, R format file, which is the um, .R. So it's a very compact way to store data. And you can also load R files by just typing load and 
the, the route you have right here. So I just charge these with our file and I have the data frame attached. Okay, I just realized that the font might be a little bit too small, so I'm just going to make it bigger for you and also I'm going to show you how to make the font bigger for your own uh, purposes. So if you click on your command tab here and then you go to the, the sign plus, you see that things are getting bigger and if you're going to go to the other way around, you just command and minus. Okay, so that could be handy for you. Um, and also I'm going to show, I'm going to talk about a very interesting tool that R offers, which is the Find and Replace tool. So if we go here, we have this magnifying glass. You click on it and you can type any characters you want to look for. Let's say, I don't know, I want to know where I typed read. So it's going to guide you through the different places in your script that you've wrote read. And also you would be able to replace all read things into something else. I'm not going to do it now because I, that would screw my whole, um, my whole, whole R session. But you, that is a very useful thing to do whenever you have, let's say, a variable that you want to change. So initially you were working with um, temperature and you want to change temperature for precipitation. And you can do it all at once in a very simple way. All right. That being said, also, um, I have this organization right here in the right. So you can follow the structure of the, the script that I'm having here. And I can click on the different names of where I was. So I was about to rejoin the explanation right here. So this makes it easy to find as well. How do I make things? appear here. I just have to put four of these signs here and four at the end. So I just try it. Now hi has appeared right here. So this is a way that I personally find easy in order to have tidy scripts and not get lost um, into all this code. Okay. Let's get back to the exercises. Um, now that we've learned how to upload data from our computer, um, I'm going to work with this database right here, which is the above that I already mentioned. Um, OK, first of all, what I would like to see is how the data looks like. Um, we can use this summary function that we already talked to previously. Um, this is going to provide me, on a glance, what's inside this database. So, so where's the beginning? Right here. So in each column, we're going to have each column name. So that's the column name. And then depending on if the variable is categorical or it's numerical, um, we're going to have different features applied there. For example, season, um, it's, uh, it's a, char a character. Uh, but, but the ones that are numeric, let's say carbon, we get the minimum, the different quantiles, the mean and the maximum value and the number of NAs. So here I have 500 NAs and so forth. That's going to be applied to each column, so each variable. Also, another way that um, we can use to um, see summary of our database. Uh, it's the one that's provided by this package. Um, so if I, I just to remind you how to install and charge packages, you go right here, Tools, Install Packages, and here you type the package you want to install and install. Um, and then to call the package in your session, you can do two things. This library situation and in. But if you don't want to charge forever this package in your session and you just want to use it in this line code, you can use this. So you put the name of the package here, like these two signs, and then the function you want to use, um, R is going to understand that you instantly call that package, but then you don't want it anymore. Um, so I'm just going to see what this provides. 
This is a very cool way to approach the data because it offers in another color whatever we have negative values and also it provides us of the same information like the mean, standard deviation, different quantiles and also the missing values. And this very interesting feature which is a histogram of each column so we can see how the distribution of the data looks like which could be sometimes very handy. Other ways to approach the database would be to call the headers which is the different rows um, of the data we have. I'm just going to replace the cars for the above. Here we have it. So we're going to see only the six first rows. Um, just to remind you how can we check the column names. Just call names. This is all the variables that we have in this database. Um, mm -mm -mm. This is something that is also very useful, which is unique. So it's going to say, for example, if we have a, char a character associated to this database, um, let's say, I don't know, topography. What are the topographies that we have? So we have bottom, slope, and top. These are the different categories that we have inside this variable. This is something that we already talked about, which is a quick reminder of consulting column by column. So we should go to above and column number one. Here we have the column number one. And, but we also can call the things by using the dollar sign. This is the number one. It's going to be the same. And we can individually provide a histogram of the variables. And uh, let's say, let's just gonna see how carbon looks like. Histogram, the database, dollar sign, and the column. And this is how our data looks like. Obviously, you can also change some of the features of this of the graph, this graph, you can, you could even like change the different x or y um, axis, or you could split the data in more bars. Um, but that's something we're gonna cover in in future videos. So following this histogram that we just created about carbon, we're just gonna make a subset of the database we have based on the amount of carbon. So let's let's say we wanna say we wanna keep the ones that have low carbon, um, just subset, just change the name of the database right here. And now inside the database, the variable we want to focus on. And we want it to be lower than 50. Just go ahead. And you see that now we've created another database right here where the, the columns are the same, but the only difference is that we have less rows, less, observa less observations. And if we see how the histogram looks like, We see that now it has changed and the maximum is 50 and we have all the rows that have a value uh, of carbon below 50. Okay, so um, I've already mentioned in other videos that R itself has a library of different databases. I'm just gonna go through that and just write data in parentheses. So we're gonna see all the data sets that R includes without installing anything uh, on the site. And I'm going to pick a database called NPK since my field of expertise is field sciences applied to plants and climate change. Um, this is a database. Well, I'm just going to charge it so you can have an idea how it looks like. It has different blocks of experiment right here and also it indicates in every row if 
that block has been fertilized with nitrogen, with phosphorus or potassium. In this case, zero means that it hasn't, and the one, it means that it has been fertilized, and it records the amount of yield that has been produced right after this fertilization. So we're gonna play a little with this database. Um, first of all, um, I'm gonna create an extra column um, to combine uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium uh, fertilization at the same time. So how am I going to do this? Um, well, I'm just going to create directly a column in our database. Um, now, just to remind you again, it only has these rows here, but I'm going to create an extra one right there, and it's going to be called all, fer the all fertilization. So I want to paste the column that includes the nitrogen information, the phosphorus information, and the potassium information, and I'm going to separate each one with this symbol here. So I'm just going to go ahead, run the command, and now we've created a new column here that includes the different fertilizations, and we can see only in one factor um, what has been the different treatments that that yield has been passed through. Okay, I'm just going to come with a little exercise here. I'm asking you if you could subset this database and taking only the data that has been um, fertilized with nitrogen. So how are you going to answer this exercise? Uh, first of all, let's just go back to the, the data and see, okay, nitrogen, there's zeros and there's ones, and we want the ones that have just the number one, which means that they have been fertilized. So we just make up a name. Um, subset. What's the database we want to subset? What's the variable? And we want the ones that are whoopa, equal to 1. And here is how we create a subset, filtering only by the ones that have been nitrogen fertilized. All right. Other things that can be useful, we have the R bind and the C bind, which basically paste vectors into the database. Uh, so let's say we have the different columns right here and we want to add an extra one, or if we have the different rows and we want to add uh, a row on the bottom, they have to match by length. But other than that, um, R is going to accept. I just put that into practice. Um, previously, we created this new column right here, just to remind you, that one, okay? Um, but what if we just create the column on the side? Okay, here you see that we've created um, a vector that it includes the same information that we have previously included in the database, and we want to just use the C bind just to combine these two. So it's like, that's the new name that I came with. Um, apply the function. I want to merge this one here and this one here. So if they match in size, R is going to allow us to do it. And now I have, this is the one that I first created, and this is the one that I just added. So this is two different ways of doing the same thing. R has multiple ways of doing sometimes the same. So just pick the one that works for you the best.